Okay, I'm not gonna lie, this is definitely the third time I've tried to film this video just because the storage on my phone wouldn't work and then the video was so long and I rambled because, uh, I don't even know. Okay, I'm gonna try to cut to the chase. <laughs> um, thank you for being here. My name's Amelia. A couple videos ago, I made a video kind of just discussing and talking about um, a problem I had and kind of how I solve it, blah, blah, blah. That was kind of the premise of it, but I suggest you go watch it. And um, I wasn't, I love the concept of the video, but I wasn't very happy with how I filmed it. I kind of filmed it um, in this professional manner. I kind of went into a separate place, you know, all this fancy stuff. And yeah, I really just want to sit down and talk with you guys about problems that I've had because I feel like there's so much value in just discussing like problems and struggles and how you personally have like have and are trying to overcome those things so maybe this will become a series of me just kind of talking about my problems <laughs> which I love because um it's therapeutic for me anyway i'm gonna not cut this video at all like it's gonna be one straight shot hopefully it's not gonna be too long hopefully it's gonna be a good length for you guys but yeah so in order for this not to be super long i'm gonna get right into it so let's start at 2020 okay 2020 was obviously a big year for everyone i was 13 at the time and before 2020, I kind of had this friend group and honestly all the friends in my life that I was super just obsessed with trying to make them happy and, you know, again, people pleaser. I was the biggest people pleaser pre-2020 um, and I'll explain more. I am the biggest people pleaser, but I used to be so intense. Uh, my friends and me now joke that I used to be a doormat with the word welcome on it. Um, that's how bad I was. Anyway, so, um, 2020 hit, I kind of got separated from all the friends in my life that I was trying to please. And it kind of left me in the spot of like realizing I'm not okay. You know, like I don't know how to have a relationship with God because I'm so busy pouring everything. I like my relationship into God is so poured into other people. It's not mine. It's theirs. You know, I, and then obviously that hit me so hard and it was a struggle, but then I decided in 2020, best decision of my life, that I was gonna really spend time and buckle down and really get my relationship with Jesus as a priority because it is a priority. And if you haven't done that yet, I suggest, obviously I knew who God was. I really, I loved him and I prayed all the time and I loved that and I did my Bible routine. I wasn't super consistent, but I did it. But I really wanted to make my relationship with Jesus mine. And I really did um, ever since 2020. It's been obviously a huge journey. It's going to be continuing to going on. Um, but since then, God started revealing a lot of things to me. And I had this huge revelation that, oh, I am a doormat with the word welcome on it. Let's fix that. So my 13-year-old brain thought that it was smart in order to fix this to ignore it basically walk away from it, pretend it doesn't exist, you know, all those fun things. So I didn't solve it. I didn't process what people pleasing is, how I can fix it, blah, blah, blah. I just was like, oh, I'm just not going to do that anymore. You know, obviously that worked for the time being. I'll explain what happened. Anyway, it worked for the time being. I got healthy friends. They knew my boundaries. They realized, oh, she's tired. You know, maybe we should leave. Oh, you know, they realized everything and they were really, really healthy. Still have these friends. Love them. But um, a year ago, I took up a managing position at the cafe I was working at in Mexico. It's a nonprofit, so you just serve your time there. You don't get paid. All the people that are working are staff of this base. They all have different roles around this, you know, the campus. So it's really just kind of pouring like one shift here, one shift there, wherever you can to help. And yeah, I took over managing of that last year, last fall, like 2022 fall. Have to clarify now that it's 2024. <laughs> Anyway, so I took that up and it was so much fun. Um, I was very kind of micromanaging at the beginning. Like I had this heavy hand over everything. Like I had to be a part of everything. But some big problem that kind of came with that is at the time I was homeschooled and I was my own teacher. You know, I had my own curriculum and it was pretty, uh, pretty 
I don't want to say this, but it was pretty easy curriculum and the fact of I could get it done really fast. I didn't need all the hours of the day to do it. So I took up so many shifts. You know, people knew if they called me, I could cover their shift. And I always was saying, yes, yes, yes. Anyway, um, this fall, I started online college classes and that requires a lot of time, a lot of effort, um, and it's my future. So I was pouring a lot into that. And people, I think, kind of assumed that I was still gonna say yes to all the shifts. And I can't blame them, this is mostly my fault, but I was saying yes to all these shifts that I really couldn't handle with my workload with school. So it became this really, really, really bad situation where I would work literally like all morning because it's a coffee shop. So I'd work the morning shifts, then I'd come back and work at school late into the night. Then I'd be posting things, you know, like getting assignments turned in like an hour before the due date, which is not the kind of student I wanted to be. Um, I was going into this college like super scared about how this is gonna go, what's gonna go. Also, if you didn't know, I'm 17 and this college course is a high school in college kind of thing. So like, no, a college and high school kind of ordeal. So I'm still in high school, but I'm just doing this college program and college classes. Anyway, so it just became so much to handle. And again, like I said, part of it was my fault, but I just became again, this people pleaser. I had to, you know, if you needed help in the cafe, I'd say yes. I was saying yes to things I really, really couldn't handle at the time. I was taking other people's burdens on me and all of that stuff. Um, this kind of people pleasing mentality started sparking its way into so many different areas of my life, like um, friendships and all of those things. I kind of felt like I was becoming that people pleasing again. And again, I never really knew how to fix it when it became a problem because I just like put it under like I, I just ignored it because it was it wasn't a problem I had healthy friends everything was fine but then when the problem arised or I wanted to help people but I couldn't like how do I balance like the balance was not there I had no balance anyway around this time I was on fire for God I was loving my Bible times in the morning I was like doing worship like my Bible times would be a solid hour maybe plus before school this is before college <laughs> but then you know if I didn't have time in the morning with college I was doing it at night you know like I was I wasn't having as much time for you know God which was honestly really a problem but um, fact is before this this was kind of summertime before fall before school started I was again I was on fire loved it I was living I was living life <laughs> And God was bringing up a lot of things in my life that I struggle with or I didn't know I struggled with, you know, like, again, overthinking, um, not rationalizing my feelings, just a whole plethora of things. And one of the things I kind of got brought up in one of my like late night Bible routine things <laughs> was this verse. Um, it is from Romans 12 verse 1 through 2 and it's the living sacrifice section. And it says, Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. And under that, I just kind of wrote, please God, not people. You are perfect in his eyes. Sacrifice your body to him and you will be made new in Christ. So this kind of, for me at the time, meant uh, that I really wasn't giving God my all, I guess. But I gave God, you know, my all in my Bible time, like, oh my goodness, I love you, God, I trust you, all this stuff. But I wasn't giving him my burdens and all those things. And I, was, I wasn't giving him mine, but I was also taking other people's on top of mine. So I kind of had this pile that was overwhelming me and I couldn't figure out why it overwhelmed me. And it was, I was complaining about the cafe that people wouldn't work shifts. I was complaining about the school, but I didn't get down to the root of the problem, which was me. <laughs> You're always... Actually, no, I'm not, I was going to say you're always the problem, but that sounds really bad and condescending to myself. I'm not always the problem, but I was in this case. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, it, it was tough. It was rough, but I realized that kind of, kind of from that verse, that's how kind of I interpreted the verse at the time, um, is to please God, not people. And as I kept kind of reading, I was like, okay, how do I please God? Okay, I'm going to 
you know, read his word, I guess is pleasing to him, you know, um, spending time with him and all those kinds of things and like giving your burdens to him. You know, I kept on like every day after school, school would get frustrated. I'd sit there and I'd be like, okay, God, I give this to you. I give you my grades. I give you my, like all of this work that I'm doing, I'm going to sacrifice it. You know, I give it to you. You know, I just started declaring that over and over verbally, you know, the cafe, if it would get frustrated, you know, morning shifts in a row, I'm tired, I'm exhausted. I'd be like, okay, I give this to you, God, you know, all of this work, I'm glorifying you. I'm serving people. I'm doing, you know, your will. Thank you, God, for this, you know. Um, after I started doing that, I, obviously I started feeling a little better, but then I also had this still pupil pleasing kind of thing haunting me. And um, I started reading about like, how can I please people, but then please God first? Like, how do I do that? Um, and after reading for a little while, I realized pleasing God obviously is following his will and doing God's will, uh, not the world's will. So God's will is also obviously love thy neighbor and, you know, help ever, help some people out and serve, you know, like Jesus served, you know, wash other people's feet, all those things. They are obviously God's will, which is pleasing to God. But God also says that um, he comes first, then people, then ourselves. You know, like there's this whole kind of list that we got going on here. But if you don't focus on God first, and this is what I could comprehend at the time, you cannot pour into other people if you are not full. So I kind of thought of this analogy. Um, think of God as like the fountain of life. And you scoop some up in your hands and this is yours. Someone next to you, they have none left. They're running dry and they're turning to you and you're like, please just pour what you have. And you don't have enough in your hands and you're like, oh, okay, um, I'll, I'll try. And then you pour whatever you have. Now you're empty. And that person that you poured might have not even picked up what you were giving them. They might have just dropped it because they just wanted something. They needed something, but you weren't the thing they needed. Anyway, you slowly after time, you learn, you stick your hands back under there and you just hold them in God's fountain. You hold them and you just are getting overflowed with all this love, this joy, this peace that God brings. And that overflowing can now and can only now go to the people that it needs to go effective. Another hard lesson I learned was you can't fix everyone and you can't take everyone's burden on you. You're not going to be able to help people sometimes. And the best thing you can do for people sometimes is to give them to God and to surrender them to God and be like, God, I put this person in your hands. I cannot heal them. I cannot help them. I cannot condemn them, but you can't. So I'm going to trust you with this person. Give them to God and continue to surrender that person to God or that thing to God. Another thing is saying no to people and to things is sometimes saying yes to God. The world's going to tell you saying no is means you're saying yes to yourself, self-care and all those things. But I'm telling you right now, saying no to some things means saying yes to God. And only once you've said yes to God and you are focused on pleasing God first, only then you can overflow into the people around you. And only then you can effectively overflow into the people around you while keeping your relationship with God. It's, it's such this balance that we have to learn in life. And again, I'm preaching this to you as I say, you can't fix people because I obviously, I feel like I'm always going to struggle with that. I want people to be happy. I want people to be okay. And when they're not, it hurts me. But again, sometimes you just need to give them to God. God can help them. You cannot. You cannot fix them. You cannot heal them. You cannot take on their burden. You cannot condemn them. God can't. I, I think that's all I have for you guys today. I hope this video wasn't too long. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you learned something. Um, there's so many takeaways that I could, I couldn't sum up this video if I tried for you guys. Um, but anyway, yeah, make sure to subscribe. Um, check out some of my other videos. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.